Alright, so hey everyone, it's Julia, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about Simone Biles and how just a certain sector of America jumped down this young woman's throat throughout the entire Olympics. I just wanted to really talk about this because even though the Olympics was a month ago, I feel like this is a topic that you can always discuss. It makes us think about athletes and how they're treated and then just like all that other stuff. So let's get into it. So people were mad that Simone Biles pulled out of the team all around in subsequent events at the Tokyo Olympics because of her mental health. But I wanted to dig into Simone a bit and give my thoughts as to why I don't feel like this is really warranted. So yeah, um, and just to pre preface it with this, I do understand the idea of pushing through even through hardship. Trust me, I'm someone who wants to push through through a lot of stuff. You know, I think having resilience and having that grit is really important. And I don't want people to try to like run with this situation and think that, you know, like, okay, then we can quit no matter what. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, Simone had a good reason for leaving the Olympics or leaving her um, her events. It's not like she just threw in the towel and was like, oh, I don't care. I'd rather be in Cancun. Oh my gosh, the Olympics. Like, no, that was not her, her countenance. You know what I'm saying? And so my thing is, I feel like, what I what I really mean to say is that I don't think you should just leave something you know I don't think you should just give up on something really quickly like that unless like if the situation you're in is like really really toxic then by all means leave but definitely think things through I think resiliency is very important to have but not at the cost of your sanity and at the cost of your own being of your own well-being so again I say this I'm saying all this to say that Simone had a purpose for what she did and um, I think a lot of people were also saying like, oh, is this going to end up um, causing people to think they can just quit whenever? And no, because you can teach people have a good reason to leave something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope that all made sense. That was a ramble. But you have to have a good reason to want to quit something. And I feel like Simone had a good reason. I feel like Simone has a lot going on. So like I said, I'm going to get into those things. So Simone Biles is a five-time world all-around champion, seven-time U.S. national all-around champion. She won ESPYs and she's a four-time gold medalist with one silver, two bronze, and the list goes on and on. I think she has like 32 medals. <laughs> Simone's life started with her not being in a good home alongside her two sisters and older brother. Her parents were addicts and were hardly feeding her, her, her or her siblings. She even said in a Facebook watch on her show that her parents used to feed this cat, but they wouldn't feed her. And so she, she remembers being really young, being hungry a lot. My siblings were so focused on food because we didn't have a lot of food. I remember there was this cat around the house and I would be so hungry. They would feed this cat and I'm like, where the heck is my food? So Simone and her younger sister Adria were adopted by their paternal grandfather, Ron, and his wife Nellie Biles, and then their other two siblings went with their aunt. Simone's older brother Tevin was recently acquitted in a triple homicide, and the mother of the, of the deceased claims that Tevin only got off because Simone is his sister. And my heart goes out to the families of the victims. We're in recess. <laughs> We spoke to Brandy Johnson, the grieving mom who charged at Biles. Her son, Delvante, was killed in the shooting. Do you believe that the celebrity of Tevin Biles' sister, Simone Biles, had something to do with the judge's decision? Yes, I do. There was so much evidence um, that the prosecutor would bring up that she shooed away. So Simone is already going through that, you know what I mean? Like you have an older brother who's kind of making you look bad. Like, and here's the thing, I understand now. Okay, so I'm gonna reiterate what I was about to say in that clip because I didn't put it very well. But basically I was saying that I feel bad that they're lumping Simone with her brother and his legal troubles. I think that's really unfortunate and that definitely makes her look bad just because you know you're lumping her together and i saw a lot of people in the comments saying oh well they shouldn't be lumping simone with her brother da, 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 da. and while ideally i would not want them to that's kind of human nature right like for example let's say like your uh your principal and like if you're in high school or your boss at your job or the president of your university they had a brother or sister who committed arson you know once it hits the media you're gonna be like oh that's um mr so-and-so's uh, sister that's mrs. So-and-so sister like that's just kind of what we do as people and I, I guess it's not 
it's not with bad intention but that's just what we do so while i understand the sentiment it's just what we do so unfortunately since she has a brother and she's a famous popular figure they're gonna lump her with her brother it's just a fact of life i guess her aunt also died one week before the olympics which is really nuts and really sad as well and so again she was dealing with a death in the family that she didn't really disclose and so she's dealing with a death she's dealing with her brother and then larry nasser so that's the thing like she went through everything with larry nasser and the way he was touching all these young girls in the usa gymnastics and the fact that they really didn't do anything and simone even said she was like they did nothing they didn't even do their jobs so many times and we we had one gold we've done everything that they asked us for even when we didn't want to and they couldn't do one damn job you had one job you literally had one job and you couldn't protect us and it's just really sad because now every time i go to the doctor or training i get worked on it's like i don't want to get worked on and so She's dealing with all of that and she felt like she needed to kind of be this champion for the younger generation and she felt like she wanted to help almost like, I don't know if this is the right word, but almost like raise up the younger generation to not have to go through what she went through which is really admirable. So she just had a lot on her shoulders. I wanna just give some context to her past competitions. So people were acting like Simone quit at the first sign of trouble but that's not true. She's actually pushed through so many other things. So Simone Biles competed in Worlds with a Kidney Stone, Nationals with broken toes and both feet, and again was sexually by their teen doctor for years. So she's went through so much hardship already at the young age of 24. 24 is old in gymnastics, but I feel like in regular life, that's not super old, okay? Like 24, you know, you're just a couple years out of your teens. Like I'm not trying to act like she's a baby or anything, but she's still pretty young. Like you can't, she's been, she's been through a lot. And it's not like she quit for the, oh my gosh, I'm going through trouble for the very first time. I'm done. Like she's been through other things. Like again, competing with a kidney stone? Competing with broken toes and both feet, that's a lot. That's a lot, okay, to deal with as a young professional, you know what I'm saying? And the other thing too is, I gotta be honest, when Simone quit, at first I was a little sad because I was like, I really wanted to see her dominate. A lot of black women in the Olympics were going through what seemed to be hell and back right before the Olympics and during the Olympics. And so I was really rooting for Simone to kill it like she did in the last Olympics. And so when she pulled out, I was kind of like, dang, man, like, dang. But then when I really thought about it, I was like, wow, she's really been through a lot. And she even, but what I'm going to say is she also said repeatedly that she's been fighting demons. So she's repeatedly said that she's fighting demons. So this girl was going through a lot and she was going through really spiritual warfare. And so that's a whole nother conversation for another day. But so if you're a Christian, then I think you'll definitely understand what I mean by spiritual warfare. And even if like you're a non-Christian, there's people who consider themselves spiritual that have an understanding of what that is. But I was really thinking about talking about that in a future video as it relates to mental health. And so yeah, the Christianity and mental health conversation in general, I think is something I've always wanted to tackle. I think it's very interesting. It's kind of polarizing, but I would love to talk about it. <laughs> But she's going through a lot, a lot of things that aren't just what we can see in this world. I feel like it's a lot deeper than anyone can really understand. Get having to push through in resiliency. And I'm somebody who is extremely, I'm a, I'm a champion for resiliency. I want people to be resilient. I want people to be strong and tough and to really get through things. But also you're a human too. You need to take good care of yourself. Like if you're not there mentally, how can you expect to perform at your best? It's just like how we say like with hustle culture, like, and I wanna make a video about hustle culture, but it's about the fact that you work so, 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 so hard, and then you don't take a break and then you burn out. You can't, we're not designed to push ourselves 25, eight. Like we're not, we weren't designed for that. We were designed for rest. That's why we sleep. That's why our body pre repairs itself in so many incredible ways while we sleep. We were not designed to work and to be up and to push, 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 push all the time. Now, some people like would say like, oh, she should have pulled out before, you know, the, the Olympics. And it's like, 
Yes, I think ideally that would have been nice if she could have been able to leave before she actually got there, but maybe she thought she could push through. Maybe she thought she could handle it. And that's what we do a lot of time. You know, when we don't want to let go of our obligations, when we don't want to disappoint people, we will push through it thinking that we can, and then we just crumble. She spoke again about the twisties that she had where she got lost in the air. And, you know, when she landed, she even looked really startled. Like, she looked really scared. And there have been past Olympics where people have gotten hurt because of different situations that happened. There have been past gymnasts that have really gotten hurt in past Olympics. So this excerpt is from a gymnast named Jacoby Miles, who also experienced the twisties, but that she didn't land safely. She ended up landing on her neck and is paralyzed from the chest down. So this next person I want to discuss is Carrie Strug, who actually performed a vault at the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Games, and she severely injured her ankle after awkwardly landing on the vault, and then she performed a second vault on her injured ankle and nailed the landing on one foot before collapsing in pain. Um, the team won their first ever gold medal in women's gymnastics, but again, broke her ankle. So last but not least, I wanted to discuss Dominique Mochianu, who said that she was 14 years old with a tibial stress fracture, and then she had no cervical spine exam until after this fall, and that she completed in the Olympic four final minutes later. So do you see what I mean? Like, I don't like how a lot of people were trying to say that this was our generation. It's these young kids today don't know how to push through and have resiliency. But these are past Olympians who were in support of Simone's decision, who were hurt in um, past Olympics and past events, and they didn't have a say. And so this isn't just a generational thing, this is a people thing. <laughs> and I just feel like it's not just about mental health, it's literally dangerous. Like, it's literally dangerous to perform a move when your head is not in the right space. And so I just feel like at the end of the day, I'm glad that she pulled out because she could have really hurt herself. Like, she could have, she could have paralyzed herself she could have even died if she landed the wrong way i remember when i was watching the coverage lori hernandez who was also who was on on the team in 2016 lori was like it's actually a miracle that she landed that way like lori was almost making it seem like almost like how how did she do that like how did she land the right way like that just goes to show how skilled she is because even though she had no spatial awareness she still landed properly i just feel like my thing is if simone had not like let's say if simone had continued and then she ended up getting hurt let's say god forbid she got hurt right i feel like a bunch of people would have said why did she keep going she should have stopped she should have known that she couldn't do it blah blah i feel like people would have still called her lame or people would have probably went at her for not not stopping you know what i mean like i feel like if she had gotten hurt that's what people would have said why didn't you stop why did you go like you should have stopped like i feel like you can't win so i think in general i kind of wanted to bring this conversation to just kind of how it, um this idea of having to like push through and not really being heard especially i guess amongst black women and i see this especially a lot in hollywood where it's like a lot of these women are kind of just expected to be like robots and well-oiled machines all the time but it's like no, you know, I'm a human being, I need to rest, I need to lay down, and things of that sort. I think it's just really sad that Simone went through all of that pressure, that pushback from people. I mean, I'm glad people by and large were supportive of her, but then I also feel like there were so many people that weren't in calling her a quitter. And I just think, again, at the end of the day, like, this is just a regular, she's a regular person. And I do think, again, putting that GOAT title on her, that she's the GOAT, she's the GOAT. So I explained this portion of the clip really terribly, but basically what I was trying to say is that I feel like the GOAT title really put a lot of pressure on Simone, but I have a few things to say. People didn't just start calling Simone the GOAT this year. People have been doing that for years. I even remember like a little after Rio, people were calling her the GOAT, the greatest of all time. I, like people were making it seem like this is some brand new moniker that they just slapped on her this year. No, people have been saying it for a long time. And now everyone's in an uproar about that now, but people have been saying that probably since Rio or a little after Rio. Another thing I wanted to say is that when people are calling you the greatest of all time at something, I think it's kind of a weird position to be in because you don't you don't want to always accept that title because you might be seen as cocky or you don't want to negate that title because then people will think you're not confident in yourself. Imagine if Simone said, no, I'm not the GOAT, stop calling me that I'm not the GOAT, then people probably would have been like, oh, she must not be confident. Um, but Simone is the most decorated gymnast 
you know, ever. She's the most decorated gymnast. Um, I'm actually reading here that it says that Simone is the most decorated gymnast woman or man in world championship history. And she could easily rack that up with Olympic medals. But, you know, I guess we'll see at the next Olympics. But yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like I don't blame her for really um, embracing the moniker because she's accomplished so much in such a short time. You know, um, I think it's definitely complicated because, you know, people I feel like wanted to humble Simone, but I don't really feel like in her position, she needed to be super duper humble. I mean, of course, being humble is always important, but the way she presented herself to me didn't come across like a person that was cocky or thought she was better than everyone. She didn't present herself like that. So people trying to humble her, it's kind of confusing. I don't know. I feel like I'm just rambling, but you know, I, I just feel like I don't blame Simone for embracing her greatness. You know what I'm saying? And she never presented herself to me like someone who thought she was better than everyone. I, it seems like everyone put that moniker on her and then she embraced it. It's not like she initiated that, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm done. Goat sewn in on her leotard. But apparently that was one of the designers of the leotard. They did that intentionally. And I guess Simone didn't ask for it. So I'm seeing here that it was actually Simone and her designer's idea to sew the goat on her leotard. It was to clap back at people. And like I said, I kind of, I understand where people are coming from where it's like, oh, if you embrace all these titles and then you end up messing up, you're going to be humbled. But I feel like in Simone's case, that's not really the case because she's literally doing moves that other people can't even attempt because they're too dangerous and she's landing them flawlessly. Like she's pioneered so many things in such a short time in the sport. So while I do understand having that level of, you know, humbleness, you know, I also understand embracing your greatness and not feeling like you're, you know, not feeling like you need to downplay yourself, you know, there's a difference. Like, so I don't blame Simone for doing that. I think in another situation or another person, it'd be different. But for Simone, I don't necessarily blame her, you know? Yeah, I think it's very, I think it's very but her situation was very traumatizing and I really hope she's taking time to just relax after this Olympics. Like I'm really hoping she's just taking the time to relax and chill out after this Olympics. At the end of the day, she was put under a lot of pressure and a lot of pain. And like I said, it's not like Simone has never pushed through in her life. She's been through things back to back to back to back and she's pushed through all up until this point the reason why we know some we know Simone Biles to be who she is is because of how she's pushed through through all of these years so to say that Simone is just a quitter and that she's pathetic and that oh this generation is soft I think it's really I think it's really dumb I think it's really dumb and again like I said I don't want people to think that oh you need to quit at the sight of any little trouble but I feel like with Simone, she had things compounding, 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 even saying that she's fighting demons, saying that she's fighting demons, okay? And she said this multiple times. So I just think again, at the end of the day, she was just going through a lot of pain and confusion and pressure. And so that's a lot for one person. And like I said, if Simone had gone on that vault and landed on her neck and been paralyzed from the waist down, everybody would have been like oh why didn't you stop you should have stopped blah 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 i guess you're not as good as you think you are da, 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 da. <laughs> like people would have had so much to say so it's almost like she couldn't win my only gripe i have to say that i had with simone and it's actually not really about this but my biggest gripe i had with her is the fact that she was on social media during the olympics i felt that she was on social media way too much and even Suni admitted, because Suni got bronze on the uneven bars. And Suni said, like, this was my best event and I got third. And she said that social media was distracting her. That was probably my biggest frustration with Simone, that she was on social media. Because I was like, oh my gosh, you're in the middle of a media firestorm. And you're just posting on your story, like, every single day. Like, I was like, bruh, if I was there, I would be like, Simone, you know, this phone, you don't really need this phone. You can get another phone, you know. <laughs> I'm not trying to blame Simone in any way, shape, or form. Going through, and I get it. I get it, okay? I get it that if everyone's talking about you, you're going to want to know what people are saying. I get it. Fully understand. But I really feel like I wish she had someone there to kind of be like, hey, you're going through a lot right now. Not only are you going through your mental health, but then you have millions of people weighing in on your mental health, speaking on situations they have no idea about let's take this phone until august okay when you when the olympics are over that's what i would have that's what i would have advised someone to do for simone 
that was really the biggest thing that frustrated me. Like I said, I see her side because it's like, everyone's talking about my mental health. I want to know what they're saying. So I get it. But I think again, this situation reminds me even of like Naomi Osaka too, where she pulled out of like, I think it was the French Open um, because she didn't want to talk to press and she just felt very overwhelmed and pressured and stressed. Um, Naomi's another situation. And really, I think Naomi just seems really sad to me. I hope she's doing okay. Um, but when I watched that documentary, she just seemed kind of sad to me. So I'm hoping that she's getting the help and support she needs. I hope Simone gets the help and support she needs and any other athletes that are going through that. I just hope y'all get the help and support you need because it's not easy to be on 10 all the time and to have to deal with everyone's opinions when you got so much going on in your personal life. It has to be a lot. And like I said, I just feel like I really wish she got off social media during that time. I think that would have helped a lot. But again, at the end of the day, what's done is done. And I'm just hoping she's relaxing now and that she's able to kind of like decompress now and take a little break because I think she deserves it. So yeah, that was kind of my two cents on Simone Biles in the Olympics situation. Let me know what you all think, you all thought in the comments. Was she a quitter? Her leaving justified. Um, What do you guys think about that? Do you think that this is going to change the way people look at perseverance and look at resiliency? Because personally for me, I don't think this should really change how people feel about resiliency. I think no matter what, you need to push through and be resilient, but also keep yourself in check because at the end of the day, if you're not functioning, then you can't function even it's even a biblical principle about rest is important and even it says that like you need to take care of yourself before you take care of your family your your kids because if you're not okay you're not going to give them your best so it's all about keeping yourself in check so let me know what y'all think in the comments i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll talk to y'all next time peace